Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another session of evening prayer. Today is Saturday, the 2nd of July. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Before our psalm, I'll just um, say a song of God's light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamped against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. <clears throat> For in the day of trouble, he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling and oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and, let us, and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm is Psalm 65. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. To you that answered prayer shall vows be made. To you shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When all misdeeds prevail against us and will purge them away. Happy are they whom you choose to draw to your courts to dwell there. We shall be satisfied with the blessings of your house, even of your holy temple. With wonders you will answer us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. In your strength you set fast the mountains and are girded about with might. You still the raging of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth tremble at your marvels. The gates of the morning and evening sing your praise. You visit the earth and water it. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare grain for your people for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You soften the ground with showers and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the pastures of the wilderness flow with goodness and the hills be girded with joy. May the meadows be clothed with flocks of sheep and the valleys stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. 
be joyful in God all the earth. May the richness of your creation, Lord, and the mystery of your providence lead us to that heavenly city where all peoples will bring their wealth, forsake their sins, and find their true joy, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We will just read a summary by Tim Keller and on, concerning that psalm, Psalm 65. It says, David is again speaking prophetically about a time when all people will come and when all the turmoil of the nations, all the war, strife, conflict, oppression will be ended. God is the savior and hope of even those who live in the farthest ends of the earth. God's salvation began with Abraham's family, who then became the nation of Israel and now has burst all boundaries of nation, race, language, ethnic origin, or geographic location. We must prepare our hearts for the rich diversity of heaven by showing love for all, and especially those of God's people on earth who are far from us socially, economically, racially, politically, or in any other way. God himself cares for the world he has made. He waters it, he fertilizes it. The cycles of growth and fertility are grounded in his own life-giving nature. He is the author of all life, from the life of a flower to the new birth that saves eternally. Since God's spirit both preaches to hearts and cultivates the soil, the work of both the preacher and the farmer have divine dignity. God's people should be at the forefront of those who care for creation. In the final verses, we get a vision of a great spring when through Christ, all the world shakes off not just winter cold, but sin and death. Let us pray. Lord, we become so absorbed in our own troubles we don't see and praise you for what you are doing across the world. Help us to escape the defense mechanism of racial superiority so we can embrace, learn from, and rejoice in our brothers and sisters across the boundaries of race, class, and nationality. Help us to receive the beauty and richness of nature as gifts from you that reflect your own abundance and life. Teach us how to glory in it so we rob neither you of your due nor ourselves of joy. Amen. It's a lovely song. Now for our first reading we have a scripture from Ezra Ezra chapter 6 and it reads then King Darius made a decree and they searched the archives where the documents were stored in Babylon but it was in Ekbatana the capital of the province of Media that a scroll was found on which this was written, a record. In the first year of his reign, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where sacrifices are offered and burnt offerings are brought. Its height shall be 60 cubits and its width 60 cubits with three courses of hewn stones and one course of timber. Let the cost be paid from the royal treasury. Moreover, let the gold and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, be restored and brought back to the temple in Jerusalem, each to its place, 
you shall put them in the house of God. Now you, Tatanai, governor of the province beyond the river, Shetha, Bozenai, and you, their associates, the envoys in the province beyond the river, keep away. Let the work on this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you shall do for these elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of this house of God. The cost is to be paid to these people in full and without delay from the royal revenue, the tribute of the province beyond the river. Whatever is needed, young bulls, rams, or sheep for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, or oil, as the priests in Jerusalem require. Let that be given to them day by day without fail, so that they may offer pleasing sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his children. Furthermore, I decree that if anyone alters this edict, a beam shall be pulled out of the house of the perpetrator, who then shall be impaled on it. The house shall be made a dunghill. May the God who has established his name there overthrow any king or people that put forth a hand to alter this or to destroy this house of God in Jerusalem. I, Darius, make a decree. Let it be done with all diligence. Then, according to the words sent by King Darius, Tatanai, the governor of the province beyond the river, Shethabo Zinai, and their associates did with all diligence what King Darius had ordered. So the elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, son of Idu. They finished their building by command of the God of Israel and by decree of Cyrus, Darius, and King Artaxerxes of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month of Ada, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. The people of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the ex returned exiles celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. They offered at the dedication of this house of God 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Then they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. And so on the 14th day of the first month, the returned exiles kept the Passover, for both the priests and the Levites had purified themselves. All of them were clean. So they killed the Passover lamb for all the returned exiles, for their fellow priests and for themselves. It was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile, and also by all who had joined them and separated themselves from the pollutions of the nations of the land to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. With joy, they celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. For the Lord had made them joyful and had turned the heart of the king of Assyria to them so that he aided them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus.
that was a quite a long reading so we go straight into our second reading which is first john 4 verse 7 to 11 and then part b of verse 12. glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen Romans 11, 13 to 24. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry in order to make my own people jealous and thus save them and just thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And if the root is holy, then the branches also are holy. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in their place to share the rich root of the olive tree. Do not vaunt yourselves over the branches. If you do vaunt yourselves, remember that it is not you that support the root, but the root that supports you. You must say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand only through faith. So do not become proud, but stand in awe. For if God did not spare the natural branches, perhaps he will not spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God, severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness towards you provided you continue in his kindness towards you. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And even those of Israel, if they do not persist in unbelief, will be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. For if you have been cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? This is the word of the Lord. That, of course, is a warning to both the natural Israelites and the spiritual Israelites, so the Gentiles, who were grafted in um, because of Jesus' sacrifice. So we as Gentiles and Jews need to be mindful of that warning, the severity of the decree. Let us join together in the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call her blessed. It reads, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham, 
and his children forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now have our prayers for members of our congregation on our prayer list. And um, we also pray for peace in the world, for individuals and their needs, and for homes or families and friends, all of whom we love dearly. And those whose time of spent caring for others those who are close to death, those who have lost hope, and also for the worship of the church. So we lift in prayer Doreen, Jean and Walter, Monica, Auntie Janie, Dion, Jane, and Sue Lindsay. We also pray for Veronica and Chester, Dolly and Desmond, and of course, Mr. Patel and his family. We pray for Jean Murphy, Deborah Fisher, Hannah Todd, Pat Vincent, and Pauline Haywood. We do not forget all that is happening or the wars all over the world, but Especially we pray for the persecuted church in northern Nigeria and the war that's raging between Ukraine and Russia, Yemen and Ethiopia, and those suffering from the recent earthquake in Afghanistan. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do pray for peace in the world, Lord. We pray for all peoples who are caught up in these wars and any acts of violence. We pray for the people of Tigray in Ethiopia and, we, and Ukraine. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons of war. May your kingdom of peace reign with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this is our special prayer we join together, which is the collect for the day. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Into your hands, O Lord, commend our spirit. You have redeemed us, O God of truth. Keep us as the apple of your eye and hide us under the shadow of your wings. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee.
And now for final blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord make, lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace and his comfort today and always. Amen. <laughs>